Hello viewers, recently I went on Gran Turismo 7 and I found this, a race around Monza in what has to be the most dangerous car in the game, the Honda RA272, take a look, an F1 car from the 60s which would surely result in many a tragic accident when coupled with Monza. Take a look at this, these kerbs are not going to be too kind to this car. As we go into the Ascari chicane, let's just pause it there and take a look at this, Exhibit A. The big bad boy of a kerb, which would surely result in a couple of crashes during the race. Speaking of the race, let's jump into the first one. Here at the Temple of Chaos, the Cathedral of Destruction, that is Monza. And we all know that Monza Turn 1 is the biggest portal to the Shadow Realm and history has proven that to be very much true. Now we do have one person spin wide, but other than that, my thesis does not prove to be correct, as we all pretty much make it through there alive, which is something of a rarity in racing games. Now head, heading round the, the long uh, Curva Grande towards the second chicane, looking for the 150 board, on the wall on the right and we found it up the inside we go slightly into the back of the car in front it must be said but well, we have gained seventh position we're going to look for the move here up the inside we go and we've done it now this was a really interesting combination in a classic car which is never easy to drive around monza which again you know we all know about monza i don't think it needs to be said really does it but uh, we've already found ourselves up in P5, with the top four not too far away, but I've made an absolute hash of that entry. Now, I just want to pause it here, because just remember this spot, okay? Just remember that spot. As we come through the remainder of the Ascari Chicane, I, I go quite wide here, and on the next straight, we're going to get pushed wide and get sent back in time. Look at that. We're back to that same spot we were a few moments ago. And... Not sure what the hell went on there. Some sort of alien technology? Who knows? There's the car in front, disappearing off into the distance, eventually managing to catch back up with this person and try to not be in last place, which is the idea of the game, really. As well, There we go. Up into P11. Absolutely incredible. So that sending back in time was really not good for us teleporting us back many many years and you know it took us many laps here to try to recover these positions eventually on lap four getting back to p9 but that's about as good as it would get here we oh, had had a meeting with the big boy curb almost sending me into the stratosphere and as a result i lost p10 i lost p9 went down to p10 but not for long as this guy met the grass and slid very wide and I retook my rightful ninth place and that was that race one bit of a disaster doesn't help when you get sent back another dimension so I changed my livery to the team lotus livery which would hopefully change my fortunes for race number two now this guy engaging reverse gear at the start of the race which is a suboptimal strategy not something I'd recommend if you have ambitions of winning the race now here we can just pause it there the ghosted out Ayrton Senna I mean quite quite a sight quite a harrowing sight that is and um, we can just pause it here as I'm inside someone but also there's a car facing the wrong way so Monza turn one living up to its usual self there and as a result of all of that anarchy I found myself up in P6 in my natural habitat which is just really to be expected, I suppose. But now trying to pull a move off here on Hurricane Rider X as we head towards chicane number two on the brakes. Nicely done. And that's P5 gained. Quite a few cars colliding with each other in the background there. You may have seen on the radar. Looking up the inside here into, into uh, the Degnas. This is not the Degnas. What am I talking about? Lesmos. The Degnas are at Suzuka in Japan. This is not that track. This is Monza in Italy. And that's Lesmo too. So a poor run from the German on the exit. 
in the Mario Kart machine and I'm able to swing around the outside and he's still there but I think this was a smart decision to back out and pull in behind and that's well played into Ascari again trying to avoid those big boy curbs on the inside the sausages are to be avoided let's put it that way and then on the exit the uh, the Belgian player who I believe was on pole position making an absolute hash of the exit and dropping down quite a few positions I'm up into P3 already and that has been a fairly successful first lap albeit overtaken quite a few crashed cars but it is what it is and uh, into turn one you see just how much we gain here on the brakes just before the 150 board almost colliding with the back of SJD 9967 uh, but thankfully not quite into the Della Roger over the curb here you can you can take that curb but you do have to hit it at the right angle carrying good speed a little bit wide on the exit definitely a little bit quicker than the guy in front I'm going to try and pull off this move and this is one of those cars where because of the gear changes and the way that it works you can definitely get a lot of move done on the exits of the corners by getting a good run through and we're going to try and get a good run through here and try to claim P2 I'm going to show the right hand side then move back to the left I want the left as it will be the inside for the Ascari and we're going to move slowly but surely alongside before hitting the brakes and moving up the inside into second place now that is a good return so far trying to avoid again the worst of the sausages on the Ascari chicane and we've done that exactly the plan one lap later purple sector being set here I think I was slightly quicker than the car in front but boom that's what happens when you play with the sausages you get thrown about into another dimension losing a position with which I had to fight back and try to claim again quite frustrating because I felt like I was the quickest player in the race but I just couldn't quite put together the consistent laps required to catch up with the leader so I suppose also starting it towards the back doesn't help but there you go I'm trying to pull off this move again showing the right hand side before moving to the left which is the side I want now this guy's going to try and hang it around the outside and to be fair to him he does but this gives the opportunity for the old switcheroo on the exit and Crofty is going crazy in the commentary box for seeing that one across the line P2 race number three though this one would my fortunes change? Let's take a look. In towards the first corner, in P10. Now, just trying to keep this one nice and tidy on the inside. We do get a nice little punt from behind into the side of what looks like Mika Hacken in there, just in front. And, well, we actually gained a few positions as a result, and I'm not going to complain about that, even if it probably would have killed me if that was a real-life accident. But it isn't. Now, this is a clear case there. Boom of a guy turning left into a right-hander another sad case of it happening seems to be a very common uh, ailment you could say of the Gran Turismo 7 player uh, turning left into right-handers turning right into left-handers now you can see here those pixels up in front representing the cars in the lead uh, quite a few seconds ahead and I had to do quite a lot of work here to try to gain on these guys but if the previous race was anything to go by it definitely had some pace and so I felt confident in trying to at least um, reel in maybe third and second place but let's see into the second chicane that, that's really an example of how not to do that chicane take a look then at exhibit B of how to do the chicane over that first bit beautifully through the second that's that's pretty much it that's the line that's, that's how you want to do it Gaining tidily on P3, evidently closer, as they are now taking more pixels up on my screen, which is the way that you measure how close you are to someone, obviously. On the exit of, not Degna, um, Lesmo 2, pulling somewhat closer into the Ascari chicane. This seemed to be, I would say, a very difficult part of the track. High speed, but you really had to maximise the track limits. So you're pushing your luck really, getting close to those sausages all the time. In towards the Parabolica, final corner of the lap. And again, gaining. 
evidently gaining here on the podium. So that was a good lap, um, lap three, setting the fastest lap of the race, 55.5. And surely knocking on the door now of the podium as we get another very tidy exit from the first chicane. Heading in towards the second chicane, this is, again is where you can get a really good run on the exit and pull off the old switcheroo. It wasn't really an old switcheroo, was it? It was just a good exit. And pulling off the move, completing the move into Lesmo 1, get, getting the job done. So pace was really good by this point. And uh, we only had a lap and a half, though, to try to reel in the leader, which would be quite difficult, would be quite a task to complete. At the start of the final lap, you see the gap was near enough two seconds. And I didn't really stand much of a chance. Although, take a look at P2 as they are going to have a rendezvous with the gravel. And this is going to give me a good chance here of second place because if you pin them narrow, we can perform the classic move, the old switcheroo. As we move to the left, and here, here's how it happens. Basically, going way too hot. I had to get on the anchors there quite a lot to make sure I didn't go into the back of the other guy. But boom, the old switcheroo has been complete. And we move up into P2 on the final corner of the final lap. And that guy must be very frustrated with that. Now, I wanted to start a little bit further forward. You can see my my issue really was starting towards the back, which is quite fun, but it isn't good for race result, really. And so here I set a 54.7. This is my next lap, which you can see was very inconsistent. I could definitely, I could have gone away quicker than the 54.7. Uh, probably could have got at least a low 54 making an absolute hash of the final corner it didn't matter though because I was on pole position for race number four and the main thing I really had to do here was survive turn one you can see there the angry horde of 11 players who could who could easily send me into another dimension but uh, thankfully that isn't what happened it isn't what transpired here on this fateful race but what did happen was I drove like a bit of a fool through the second chicane. As you can see, getting a penalty for driving, I would estimate, seven pixels beyond the track limit. Serving that penalty, a one second, I mean, quite quite a harsh one. But it is what it is. Move down into P2. And thankfully, no more positions were lost. And now we had a task on our hand of trying to get back into the race lead. And that's exactly what I did, not too long after. Looking for this move in towards turn one, carrying a bit of extra speed in towards the corner, courtesy of the slipstream, almost into the side of this guy, and thankfully he had the awareness to drive a slightly wider line, as I probably would have barreled into the side of him if not. And now it's a fine little drag race towards the second chicane once again. I'm going to try it around the outside, but it's not quite going to work as we dispose of him in the lead of the race and I, 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 I take the lead of the race back and from there well to be fair to these guys right behind they did keep quite close for a few laps and I wasn't able to really shake them it was quite a tricky race you see a big mistake here on lap three and the two guys you know queuing up eagerly waiting for a bigger mistake but it wasn't to be it was going to be a race win finally at long last amazing what can happen when you actually qualify race win number 101 on the account but we all want to know what the best driver in the world has uh, has to offer around monza in the honda let's take a look starting in p9 immediately i mean let's just pause it there how can you end up perpendicular to the racing line within three seconds of the race starting quite quite a mystery to me but there you go Welcome to the US servers, I suppose. But anyway, moving in towards turn one, already in P6. And, you know, trying to... Uh, guy, guy there turning left into a right-hander once again. And I've moved up into P4. So that's five positions in about 20 seconds, which is a very solid return on my investment. But we're going to try and go for a little bit more than that here because we're already pounding P3. He just cannot get me out of his mirrors. Well, he can, because I just turned left there. 
in towards the braking zone. Great move, absolutely incredible. You might have spotted someone getting sent back in time on the radar just then. And uh, we're going to go up the inside of Edson Senna into Lesmo 1. Moving up into second. And this has been, I mean, Scott Speed. I mean, I just run out of superlatives for this guy. Already in second, the guy in front has a penalty. You see Edson Senna there getting disposed of in the gravel trap. For the second time in this video, Edson Senna really not um, doing too well. But here, look, 1 minute 39. And Scott Speed has already got into the lead. It, it's just too easy for this guy. This man just needs to be nerfed in the next update. Setting the fastest lap of the race. And then not long after, coming around to win race, I don't even know, 5 million. Scott Speed wins once again. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time. Goodbye.